Hey, hello. Let's do some homework. We had seven questions tonight. It was sort of an assortment of stuff you hopefully had some idea how to do. Uh, we talked about some in class. We're just going to go over a few more. So number three was talking about probability. And in this case, probability of getting a red marble. And in case you forgot, probability is always just the ratio of favorable outcomes to possible outcomes. Which basically means comparing what we want to have happen to what is possible and what could possibly happen. So in this case, what we want to have is a red marble, of which there are eight. So there are eight favorable outcomes. And then possible outcomes is everything, anything that could happen. So there's two white, eight red, and five blue. That is a total of 15 possible outcomes. And when you're writing probability, unless they talk about percents, your answer is generally going to be written in a simplified fraction, just like that. So that's it. That wasn't so bad. All right, then number seven, Maddie taking guitar lessons. Good for her. Registered for private lessons. Also good for her. With a music teacher. That's a plus. Cost of lessons is shown in the graph below. Okay. So explain the meaning of point A on the graph. So before we can understand what point A is, we probably want to have an understanding of what the whole line means. So what this line represents is the relationship between the number of hours she spends in lessons and compared to the cost of lessons. And we can see as the number of hours goes up, so does the cost. And that makes sense because the more lessons you take, the more you would have to pay. That's not cost per lesson, it's total cost overall. Okay, so point A, this one right here, what does this mean? Well, we look at where on the graph this lies. So this says that point A, she's gone to four hours lessons. Okay, that's our x-axis, and then on the y-axis we can see she spent $200. That's what point A means, that at four hours you will have spent $200. And then you can figure out the unit rate, uh, which it doesn't ask for, so this is a good bonus. So four hours at $200, we can figure out the cost per hour by saying what's 200 divided by 4 and we get 50 so $50 per hour and then if we look at our line we can see whether or not that rate stays true no matter where we are so something for you to try out on your own so use the graph to determine the cost of two hours of lessons so if that's the case we want to know the cost which is our y variable and we know that x is 2. So we just go we follow 2 to where it hits the line, which is right there. And then we just go over here. And we get that at 2 hours, that would cost $100. Explain how you determine your answer with this blue line right here. That's how I determined it. OK, one more. Use the graph to determine how many hours of lessons Maddie received for $400. So this is the same concept as B, except now instead of knowing hours and finding costs, now we know costs and we're finding hours. So we start at $400. Again, we follow it to the line. There it is. And then we just see where that lies on our x-axis, our x-coordinate for that. And we get 8 hours. So for $400, you get 8 hours. And 400 divided by 8, guess what that gives you? Still 50 per hour. That's it. The rest hopefully wasn't too bad. So you're free to go. You don't have to watch the rest. So it probably won't help you out too much. Okay. So 8th graders. Now you get to pay attention. So if quadrilateral Xena, Xena, that's sort of an old reference 
Go Google this one. This. Oh man, good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, whatever. So, or ask your parents. Your parents understand this better than you. Okay. Unless they don't, because they didn't watch TV. That's probably a good thing too. All right. T is point of intersection. Uh, that's where our diagonals meet, which is a good thing to know. For each situation, write an equation, solve for y. Okay. So E n is this one. This one, perfect line. And A x, this perfect line here. And these, uh, that's what we know. So if this is a parallelogram, we know E n has to be congruent to uh, A x. I guess is what that said because it's parallelogram and opposite sides are congruent. So our equation would look like 5y plus 1 equals 8y minus 5. And then we just solve for y. So minus 5y minus 5y. Uh, we bring the constants to one side, so let's get rid of 5 plus 5. We cancel stuff out, so cancel, cancel. We get 6 equals 8 minus 5 is 3. So y is just 2, and that's a, right? Uh, yeah, just to solve for y, so I don't, I don't really care how long e n or a x is. So that's, that's a, that's 2. Now you go to b, so I'm going to erase all this mess. So a n x, measure of a n x, hmm? and n x e. Okay, this isn't so bad. This angle and this angle. So since this is a parallelogram and we have a couple of congruent triangles, I know that this angle is congruent to that angle. If you don't believe me, you can try to prove me wrong. I'm gonna be over here where this works. Okay, they're congruent. Trust me. Or look at your notes. We talked about it. Or prove it. Whatever. I don't care. But they're congruent. So 3y minus 1 equals 2y plus 1. Now we just do the same thing, we just solve for y. So minus 2y, minus 2y. Uh, so let's bring the constants to the other side, plus 1. Uh, cancel, cancel. 3y minus 2y is just y. Oh, this is super awesome. Is it 2 again? Really? Really? 6, 5, 5, yeah. So 2 and 2. So far, so good. Alright, C, E, T, the extraterrestrial, and E, A, it's in the game. Uh, e, A, that's the whole thing. I'm going to a different color here. Now you can't see it blue anymore, whatever. Uh, so that's our numbers. So we can say, since it's a parallelogram, then these diagonals bisect each other, right? which means that ET and AT are the same, or that EA is just equal to 2 times ET, right? And we know EY, or EA is 3Y minus 10, and 2 times Y minus 1. So we get an extra step, we get to distribute, do, 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 do minus 10, 2 times y is 2y, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. These numbers are super easy because I'm a nice person. Da -da -da. Do that. Bring our tens to the other side. If you don't remember how to do this, watch it very slowly or look at your notes. It's always a good idea. 3y minus 2y is just y. Negative 2 plus 10, that's 8. Now we try to see if that works. 24, 14. 16, 14. Yeah, that works. Cool beans. All right, one more. So far, so good. So, 2, 2, 8. So, main, main, A, N, E, and N, E, X. All right, that's a good one. Okay. So those are our two angles. We say, how does main and not quite next, how are they related? Well, since it's a parallelogram, we know consecutive angles are supplementary, which means that if we were to take 7y minus 5, add it to 3y plus 5, 
This should equal 180. Or we can even write it out for feeling fancy. Main plus manex equals 180. And then one more time we just solve for y. So we can combine our like terms here. This is, oh man, these are super easy. This isn't even fun. I mean, it's a little fun, but it's not. Uh, negative 5 plus 5, that just cancels. So it's just 10y equals 180, which is not a challenge. So y is just 18. And then you're done. That wasn't so bad, right? Happy faces all around. Alright, number five. I apologize for this grid. The smart board has no good grids, and the internet too is lacking in good grids, so we have this blue and red nonsense, but that's okay. So number five says M is the fourth vertex of a parallelogram. Coordinates of the other three are these. And M can be anything except which. Alright, so let's do this nice and easy. Let's just plot in purple our three coordinates. So six, four. So we go right six, up four. <laughs> And then 8, 1, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 0. Okay, that was fun. So now we just plot our other four points. So let's start, let's go backwards. Let's, let's hope it's D. So D says 0, 3. Mm -hmm. So if we look at this, does this look like it could be a parallelogram? And we can look at slopes. We can say this one goes left 2 up 3. This one goes left 2 up 3. Yeah, this one's looking pretty parallelogrammy. Okay. All right, let's try C. 4, negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. All right. This one also looks pretty parallelogrammy. We go, let's see, down 3, right 2. Down 3, right 2. It's the same thing. It's just on the other side. So this one looks pretty good. All right, let's try 12, 5. Uh, what color do we want? Uh, let's go with whatever this is. 12, 5. So 5, 10, 12, 5. That's different. But okay, so now we look at from here to here. This goes over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then up 1. This goes 6 and up 1. Those slopes look pretty good. That's looking pretty parallelogramish. And so let's try A. Let's see, 6, negative 2. Oh, yeah, this one. This one doesn't look good. No, no, not even a little. Uh, this one, this is over 2, up 3, which means this would have to be up 2 and over 3, and it's it's not there, which means... This is not parallelogram. And if you want to say that I didn't really check these all the way, and, you're, and I said they just looks like a parallelogram, and then you're like, but you said never trust a picture. Okay, this is not a picture. Okay, technically it's a picture. But this is a carefully drawn, carefully drawn plotting of points. Okay, this is as accurate as we can make it. This isn't just some... Is this a parallelogram? No, that's this is garbage pictures. This is accurate. You can trust the picture when you draw it yourself, and it's accurate because there's no room for uh, subjectivity or whatever. So if you don't like it, you can prove it harder, but I'm telling you, that's your answer. Okay? Okay. That wasn't so bad. More smiles all around this guy. He's a Broncos fan, so he's got a paper bag on his head. <laughs> 43 to 8. What? All right. Good night.